All right, folks, back on the boss, man. She'll go down to Albany, Georgia, Doherty County here with Patrick Gale, Albany State Golden Rams basketball coach. She will be out of Syed Conference. Coach, how's life down there in the good 229, man? Can't complain. Thank the Lord that, that we're here for another day, for another challenge. Yes, sir. Coach, can you just go into your sixth season already, man? Can you believe it's been that long already for you, man? I can't believe that. It's the, the time goes by fast. Yes, yes, indeed. And, you know, um, I feel like being somewhere in this business, Coach, you know how it is, man. That long is, 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 a, is a good run because it's, people want you to win so fast. You need to get every application to have, want, want you to just win or they want to change over and not let you build something. So this business, Coach, for six years, man, is you're, you're a 10-long senior guy, man, <laughs> which is, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. <laughs> it's funny you say that. I mean – that that's some of the things that coaches do think about, and I have a lot of good friends in the in the in the profession. So again, that's why I start out every day with with giving thanks and Lord, what is your purpose for me today? Because if if you worry about man and what people say, and trust me, they there have been a lot of arrows sent my way, then you're not going to do what your purpose is. And I'm bigger than you know what whatever this world has for me you know in in the in the natural sense so my biggest thing is trying to get my guys prepared and ready for a a, a long season and 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 we pray that it's a successful season but when you got guys graduating and when you got guys you know let me know coach i really appreciate the things that you've told me i'm experiencing those things then that's all that matters it's funny you say that, Coach Gale, because I was talking about that uh, in my previous interview with, with the coach I had, I had on because, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm 40 years old. And the things that Coach told me 20 years ago, to almost like now I've been almost 40, having family, having, you know, all these, having a, a girl, you know, all these things is like, wow, Coach told me years ago, but now it all makes sense to me. I put the puzzle together now, and now I'm and now I'm more advanced and experienced in my in my life now. It's crazy, and and you know, I my my favorite line, and I tell my my seniors this every year. So if you play for me, and there's been a lot of guys that have played for me, they'll they'll say the line before I say it. The real world will teach you better than I can. All my job and my purpose and it's from the first day I started coaching is just to prepare you for this real world because it's not fair. It's it's going to be some very long days, adverse days. So you have to be prepared, prepared for that. And I wouldn't be doing my job if I'm worried about, you know, a scoreboard in a basketball game and not the scoreboard of life. So that's my purpose. And Coach Gill, do you feel like I go out to Tennessee State? So I was a transfer with Kansas City State. So been an HBCU school, having a lot of young black men, having because you know we we you know how it was in the world, uh, helping rear them, guide, guide us in the right direction. How much right. of that of that mission and vision for you, man, and in your work and passion, helping young black men who look like you, who come from your background, who have the same experience you do, helping them see what's ahead of them after they leave Auburn State and go into the to the real world. I mean, that's that's the whole purpose. I mean, what when I got the opportunity um, five years ago, um, even this week, five years ago, I started this week to to come to Albany State, you know, before this was before COVID. This was before the movement, you know, for HBCUs. I was very, you know, I was I was interested because it was a challenge, you know, going to a place that I wasn't, you know, coming from as far as what I'm used to as far as, you know, now you're leaving your comfort zone, you know, it doesn't have anytime you leave where you are, it's a com it's you're leaving your comfort zone. But the biggest thing was I felt really good about being at an HBCU because of what you just said, because of talking to young black males. And I think that, you know, my experience, you know, sometimes people say, well, I'm an HBCU alum and that's great, but sometimes it's great to not have gone to an HBCU, to see the opposite. And what I've seen to kind of mentor and show, you know, students of HBCUs, you know what? They're going to um, judge you. They're going to look down at you. I was in those rooms, but this is how you deal with it. And that encounter, you can actually get them to think the opposite. So now you have people, you know, since I've been at Albany State, that wouldn't even know about um, 
HBCUs or Albany State that they're now like, wow, I'm, you know, coach, I, I, I saw you guys, you know, your football team, your baseball team, and man, Albany State, you know, that, 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 that Ram head, man, that's everywhere. I said, that's right. So to me, when you can give exposure to your school, when you can give exposure to HBCUs in circles that aren't the HBCU realm, to me, that's even greater. So, um, you know, talking to young men that's going to be in the real world and the world is not an HBCU environment. The world is actually opposite. So we have to prepare them with that pride of going in and still showing that pride, but showing that pride in a way that you can actually get people to follow and support HBCUs because there is not enough support for HBCUs. No matter what we did two years ago, as far as the movement, it's it died. I'm I'm in it. I'm in the trenches. It died, and it and then it didn't. And, and we think about financial when you think about support, but let's talk about at a level that's even higher. Let's talk about a bureaucratic level. Let's talk about you know the the legislative level. That's where we need the support. And I don't think enough people are speaking about it, and enough people are really understanding that they can kill you with the pen a lot quicker than they'll kill you with the sword. Yes, and I can speak to Tennessee State. They're Tennessee trying to take, 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 take us over. Yes. And 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 unfortunately, I don't want to say this, 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 this is me saying I coach girls in it. Being in the South, <laughs> certain states, certain political ideologies, you we, we get the we get the scraps. So I'm just gonna play the lead at that. You said I'm saying it, huh? I'm not saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Hey, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. This is I'm recorded. I started out with. We're not speaking about financial. Yes. We're talking about legislative. Please. So what yes. the biggest thing I want people to do is we can't just tell people to get registered and go vote. We got to tell people to get educated. Yes. And we got to tell people to read, you know, newspapers, not just newspapers in your community. Read the international newspapers. They may tell a story even better than your local newspaper. You know, read the, the national newspapers understand what they're doing and then play chess stop playing checkers you know think years ahead you know what you and I, that's what i tell my guys i'm not trying to get you ready for the next four years I'm trying to get you ready for the next 40 years you know yeah. so when they when they're your age they can say okay i knew this was coming this is how i'm going to teach my children to to be in this world because Unfortunately, our forefathers, we shouldn't be going through the same problems and issues our forefathers did. But if you study the history of Albany, we kind of are. You know, my dad would be 80, 84 years old, August 27th. So he marched Dr. King and those guys. So I, I got their first hand stories of how, how it was and how the part of Atlanta where the arena is by work at, that they couldn't cross some tracks after dark and he, he was growing up. So Having my father, 84 years old, still with that firsthand knowledge to tell me about how it was and how it is. And it's amazing I can pass it along, along to my children, you know, to those who I speak to. It's like, I'm blessed to have, have my father stay here with me to tell me these things. Like you're talking about Coach Girl as well, say I, how, how it is and how to keep fight going, keep pushing, using this platform I have for good. I've had four, as flash coach, I had show 14 years coach, and I own it myself. Nobody tells, tells me what I, I can and cannot do. And that's so important. I can use this show to put out good content for our community and our people and educate our people and give them some breadcrumbs to go dip into and learn, learn for themselves. And that's awesome. That's why when you contacted me, did, how long did it take for me to respond? <laughs> Not very long. Because <laughs> you knew. You doing my... what you're doing. Yes, sir. And Coach Gillibas gets man for you, man, and your young men. What are the pillars of your program for your young men? Who, when they want you recruiting a young man, wants to come to Albany State, put him on a golden ram. What are you looking for in a young man? And what's your culture pillars about for the, those who are hearing about your story, your story here on the, for, for the first time on the show? Well, the first thing is, and and I'm going to kind of keep it in, in, in simplified terms, you got to be low maintenance. You got to be self-motivated. You got to love basketball. You have to want to understand that you are special not because you play basketball, not because you're tall or what, whatever, or athletic or whatever you think, but because God made you, you know? So what can you do with your talents at an Albany state that's going to leave a legacy? I talk a lot about legacy. What legacy are you going to leave? And 
starts with winning. You know, you, you said it. Nobody wants to talk to you unless you're winning. And if they want to talk to you and you're not winning, you, you better be careful. So it starts with winning. That's why winning's important. Winning's not important because everybody's trying to win. The winning's important so that you can have that platform. And then what are you going to do when you have that platform? When people are listening, what are you going to do with it? So I want young men that think ahead. I want young men that are, are self-motivated. I want young men that love basketball because that's how I know you. And, and, and you know, people don't realize that you always will get an opportunity. It's are you ready for it? So at, ultimately, I want young men that's ready for the opportunity. And Coach Gill, how is the transfer portal NIL world of the, has how did it change for you to ever get better high school players for your program? And folks who don't know about D2, you can actually split scholarships and get a whole roster and split the money around. You don't know that about D2, but you can. But how has it allowed you to get better high school young men uh, to come down and play for you with this, with them not getting recruited as hard as they used to because of the transfer portal and how D1's going right now? Correct. And and we just talked about opportunity. It could be a detriment or it could be an opportunity. So, you know, I just actually had a player, a returning senior, just striking an IL deal. Um, Got to play Albany Strikers. So, <laughs> so, 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 but again, that was something that he kind of took over. You know, I kind of initiated the conversation and then I threw the lob and he 360 that thing through, you know, so. It, it, it helps when you find the right young men. You know, um, if you see an opportunity in NIL, if you see an opportunity in the transfer portal and it being oversaturated with players, then you're going to take advantage. If you see it as a detriment and you're woe is me, it's going to happen. So what, what I've been able to do is, believe it or not, I've been able to get really high-level high school players I've been re been able to get, you know, obviously some D1 transfers. But the biggest thing is I've been able to get guys that are very, very much so humbled and just appreciative of the opportunity. And we want guys that want to take advantage of this opportunity because there are too many players in the transfer portal. So obviously guys are going to come down. And for HBCUs, it helps because with, with us, you know, not having what, you know, other schools may have, we can kind of be in a more of a playing field when it comes to certain type of players. Yes, and it, it also helps with the budget too. But I know, but plenty of times I said I understand the budget. I know how to, how it is budgetary things, both recruiting wise, and right. having to be able to actually pay for guys. You can stay be in state school too. It helps right. with state state school. You can actually pay for your guys not being private school. So you have that advantage over Clark or Morehouse in that regard. So I feel like you're in a good spot to find guys to come play. You can draw a circle around Albany, go two or three hours and find what you want. And it's good because being around somebody like yourself is going to help a young man set them up after basketball. And hey, that's my thing, Coach Gail. If you can play, they'll find you. So right. you go to a high major school, you come off the bench, not really playing, and so that, you, you're losing money. So I'm going to say to Albany State or play at a Tennessee State and show what I can do. It's going to make me more money in Europe or in Asia or G League or the NBA. But if you Correct. sit on the bench not playing, you're not, getting, you're not putting a good film out there. So when you take that quick check, sometimes it hurts you on the back end. That's right. That's right. You, you're, well, you're very well educated. It looks like you've had some certain experiences in your life that you could, you could preach on, not just speak on, you could preach on. Oh, yes, I have. And, Coach, <laughs> I will tell you this. I've been asked to bring my show to certain platforms. I would have to give up who I am. And I Stay can't do that. Stay who you are. Yes, sir. Stay who I you are. I can't give up. And, that, and, and it's funny you say that. That's so important because I try to tell my guys the same thing. You got to be authentic. You got to be who you are. Now, with that said, I'm sure certain people don't like you because of that. Or some, people feel, like, some people feel like you're making a mistake. But that's why, see, we, we, when we are like-minded and we be around like-minded people, conversations like this can happen. So you're actually helping me by, by what you just said. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you being authentic and who you are. Yeah, because I tell people, I can't coach with this. Is who I have once with this. This is JR. I don't, <laughs> I can't coach. With, I have once with this is me. Either you like me or you don't. <laughs> And, and that's the thing. We can still work together if you don't like me. Heck, we can still like the same things if you don't like me. 
but the Lord did not put me on this earth to find any friends that you can, you can understand that. And that's how I live my life. That the one thing I'm not worried about is trying to find friends. Yes. And you know what coach I spot this, the Lord knows that I am a very jovial person. I'm who I am. I'm authentic and I'm real. And you don't like me. So what's wrong with you? Cause I, <laughs> cause I don't. That was JR of... saying that. What yeah. I said was it ain't going to bother me, but be yeah, who you but, are. But no, nah, but you don't bother me. I laugh at it. I laugh about it. You know, it's funny. <laughs> but, you know, I'll say, I'll say, you can make so much more money, JR, but I say that I won't be happy making right. your money because that's right. I have to give up who I am. Like, right. I'll give you an example. Coach, if I don't have you on my show and I work somewhere else, I had to ask somebody. Wow. I asked myself. That's right. That, hey, <laughs> all, the, all the things came from you. There was yeah. no real man. And, and, and that's the thing. And, and uh, JR, to be, you know, in all seriousness, I have to definitely support people like you because I respect what, what I'm trying to do is get my young, young, young men to do what you're doing. You know, you, you, everybody has their own platform. Everybody has their own talents and gifts. Don't try to be like someone else, be who you are because that didn't come from you. You know, that that's from up above. So what you're doing, your personality, like you said, everything about you, that didn't just come from you or your parents. That came from up above. So yes. you got to be who you are. And, when, and, and what I'm learning is that when you're not doing that, that's actually a sin that they don't talk about. You know, that's actually going against going against who you are. There's a reason why you get sick when you try to do something or be something you're not or be in mm -hmm. circles that you're not supposed to be. You know, so I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, coach, I'll tell you what, and coach, so I told, told y'all very my girls from Albany. So if you come talk to your team, I'll do it when I'm in town with her. Oh, I'm absolutely. Have, hey, 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 hey that, that's on air. So I expect you to be there. You're going to take pictures and all. I expect you to be there, JR. Absolutely. Oh, I'll do that. I love talking to young men and giving them to me nuggets because I'll tell you what, I've learned through trial and error, coach. No, I started off doing the 2 a.m. show, coach. Wow. It was me. Awesome. The deer and the truckers, okay? <laughs> 6 a.m. Hey, I got a good friend that's a trucker, man. And he he drives back and forth from Atlanta all the way down to, to South Florida. Sometimes he'll even go past Atlanta all the way up to New Jersey. So hey man, the truckers, they need they need something like this. So don't uh, that that this this that's real good that you started that way. Yeah, that I went from the, then I did the, the quiet storm, 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I went the weekend. Well, it wasn't truckers listening to that. <laughs> then, no, no, then, then I went the weekend. So then, then I did. Then I went to full self syndication. I got forty five awesome. station coach. Forty five. Yeah, I, I saw. I saw. I was reading up on you, man. I was like, wow. I was like that. I, I listen. I'm. I'm. I'm humbled and I'm blessed <laughs> that you even thought about me. And if it's because I was a you know a HBCU coach in Georgia. I'm humbled to be an HBCU coach in Georgia. Whatever got us connected, yes. I appreciate it. Well, you know, my thing is I want to help out black coaches, HBCU coaches. I'm an HBCU grad myself. So I have a, another show called the BCC. Black Co Black Coaches Corner, I have you on that show too. So I, 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 that's, this is what I do, man. I help our people. I'm for our people, and I don't care about it. You know, I don't, I'm not against anybody, but I'm for my people. It shouldn't be JR the radical because I'm for my people. Right. It, 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 I think you would assume you're pro what you are. That should be assumed. Absolutely. Absolutely. It should not Absolutely. be a stigma that I'm pro what I am. But it Absolutely. is in this field sometimes. It's funny. You, you would you would believe, believe it. I've been called off the air and on the air by some of the other, other people because I'm pro what I am. Right. That, that's a problem. <laughs> well, well, JR, hey, we, you, we wouldn't have, and that's another thing I've learned. When you have that, that means you're doing what you're supposed to. And the more amplified it is, the more that you're doing, the more that you're reaching a lot of people. So it it it, that, it comes with when you, when you're blessed and when you're anointed, it comes with that. So I'm I'm sure you you just brush it off. I do. I laugh at it. You know what's funny? People are upset because I don't have any staff. Really, I, I, you're upset. I'm the staff. No, well, not, not let, let me understand this. They want to be a part of your staff, or they just like, man, you need to have a staff. They're like. How's he doing this all by himself, pretty much? Well, tell him it ain't by yourself. Tell him, tell him there's a greater power pushing you. I said, I said, I, I told him it's me, God, and my, and, and my ancestors. That's what I say. That's right. That's <laughs> it's right. It's me, God, and my ancestors. And That's I, a great answer. And I listen to my mother and my father. 
That's but right. pretty much it's the, it's the stance of God and myself making the decision to make this thing the way it is. And I feel like this, Coach Gill, every tough decision I've made has been the right one. That's right. I've had I've had to pray on it and has to just has stick in my gut. Always been the right decision when I made the decision. Well, well, here's the thing, Jr. I mean, that's why you have to go talk to other people because we have and and you said you're 40, correct? If, if I heard almost that correct, almost 40. Yes. So we have some young people that are almost 20, you know, or almost 24, and they're going through some of the same things you went through, and they're not seeing that light. Something allowed you to keep walking that path. They're not seeing that light because it's dark and they just need something. And even a voice. Yes, you're on the right path. So what you're saying right now, that's that voice that they can keep walking that path. So that's why you're important. If no one ever tells you, Coach Gale is telling you, you have to keep doing what you're doing because that voice, you may think, you know, that you have these stations for people like me, but it's for the you. It's for you that's at uh, Hampton or at an Albany state or a Tennessee state that needs to say, you know what? I am on the right path because there's so many other voices telling them you ain't going the right way. You ain't doing the right thing. Just think about it. Somebody told you, you need to have staff. I mean, instead of supporting you, they're telling you the negative. And so you can imagine what oh, I was told. Do. I'm not a real business. I, somebody who's prominent. I won't say their name. I'll say off there told me probably you, you're not a real business. It's just you. And that's and that's sad. And 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 I'm willing to bet that is somebody with your similar background and similar features, if you know what I mean. Yes, and they're very prominent. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't say their name. They're you very don't have prominent. To. You you don't have to. But, uh, but yes, but they, the... they 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 and I'll tell you this: there's been those who look like me, look, look like me in the, in our field, who refuse to give me any advice or help me. That's 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 and coach. That's I, I don't I don't say this braggadociously. I have not gotten help from people. Right. It's I've, I've had to learn through my own trials and errors. I have not gotten any guidance because when I was trying to get started, those calls I would make to people, oh, I, I I can't do it or can't do the rain check. When I was trying to get advice from people who were established. Well, until until we figure out that part, until we understand. That when you climb a mountain, it's not you just going up that mountain. You're going over people that have pushed you and elevated you. But when you get to that peak, there's also the same people you're going to see on the way down. And people need to understand, if we all get up there, and, and there's room for us all, then we'll all be good. But it's going to take us working together. Throw that rope back over. And it's sad. And, and I won't go into detail, but... Just know that I, I know exactly what you're going through. I know exactly sometimes the nights you've had, but that's why I'm I'm saying this as more than just me. It's, it's coming through me. The Lord is, is definitely what got me through, especially this past couple of seasons. And it's funny because I, I you, you, you begin to doubt yourself just because you're like, man, I, I know this is how to do things. But Lord, what, what's going on? And all it was that I've realized, come closer to me. Get away from that, come closer to me. And that's what I'm doing. So JR, I give you the same advice. Keep doing what you're doing. Just come closer to your creator. And I, I will do that, Coach Gill. And I thank you for that that word. Again. We'll close on that word. That, that's a word to close in an interview. With that word from the Lord through Coach Gill, he is the good addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes. you're a funny guy, man. You're a funny guy. Hey, coach, I enjoyed this, man. And I and I, I, will, I promise you, so my girls from Albany, I'll be down there to see you and your team. And when I'm in town, I'll just get your number off the air here shortly. And I'll when I'll, when I'll talk to your team and give them some of these nuggets I have, man, so they can see someone like me, a little old, little older than them, but I, they can see that I've been in their shoes. Well, and please look where I am today. Please do. Please do. You got to. I, I've enjoyed it. And I would love and I'd be honored and I'll take you to lunch wherever you want to go. And, and we could just break bread and just continue to talk. Sounds good, Coach. It was fun, man. Same here. Take care, take care JR. All right.